It's Colts TV with five time Schultze Award winning anchors, Kieran and Mal. Peter Aposta something sports. Robbie Pilmer, weather. And your reporter in the field, Connor Larson. Now meet the rest of our crew. Vicky, Chris, Jason, and Lamar. Mark, Jesse, and Graham. Kean and Becca. Sammy, Eddie, Megan, Ryan, Maddie, and of course, Mr. Schultz. It's Colts TV in your island. And now over to your hosts, Kieran and Mal. Hey, my name's Kieran Arnold. I'm Mallory Einett. And we're going to be your anchors for episode two of Colts TV. We've got a jam-packed episode for you. Yep, we've got everything from kettlebells to basketball. Let's, Let's take, take a, a look. look. This is Colts TV at cheerleading practice. Check them out. varsity field hockey started off with an amazing season going undefeated to the qualifiers for OFSA. I really felt that they connected well as a group, they learned from each other and they really progressed well together as a team. Our team, they played the best game of field hockey I've seen in a long time. Couldn't capitalize when we needed to but unfortunately we're saving some stuff for next year so I look forward to next year's season and a great group of girls coming into it as well. I think the season was a unique year overall. Everyone had a really strong connection and it was a good vibe to be on the field. We had an amazing group of girls. We all worked so hard and very well together on the field. We communicated, our passing was awesome. It just got better throughout the season. Congratulations on a great season, girls. Good luck next year. Player Profile. Victoria Wicks, Player Profile. <laughs> Victoria, how old were you when you started swimming? Uh, I started swimming at the age of 11 and started competing at the age of 12. And do you still feel that you have the same passion for swimming as you did when you were younger? Uh, I definitely love it more than I did when I, when I was younger. Nick, how do you feel that uh, Victoria has grown as a swimmer? I think she's come along very well over the last three or four years and she's very goal oriented now. And we're looking forward to making senior nationals. What's your lifetime goal? Definitely to go to the Olympics and be on the Canadian Olympic team. I feel like I work very hard and my times are starting to show it, so I feel good. Thank you for always supporting me and always supporting my dreams and goals. Uh, 
can show you the world. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart On Thursday, October 20th, our rugby teams went to Fletcher's Field. We got five teams to cover. Let's go check them out. Let's start off with our Bantam Boys. A fantastic fake pass followed by a great run by Matt Witherspoon. Gaetano rips away from the field and streaks down the sideline. A nice juke by Carrillo leads to a try. Now on to our junior girls. What a run by Mandy Keenan. Jordan Boyle scoops and scores the try. Junior boys are up next. A huge run by Andrew Coe leads to a try for our Colts. Two great tackles by Connor Rose. Michael Keening with a huge try-saving tackle. Let's take a look at our senior girls. Excellent passing and great teamwork by our senior girls leads to a try for Taylor Robar. What speed shown by Sam Gordon. Finally, senior boys.
Our teams did a good job playing through the harsh weather. A long pass from Tim Chapman to Brian Duncan, and Brian does the rest. A huge hit by Brian Duncan. Let's see that again. What a catch and run by John Pappas. Brilliant running and excellent moves by Jarrell Williams leads to a try. Let's take a look at some Survivor Fitness games. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Anderson here to bring you up to date on something called the Survivor Games. It's a series of competitions that take place throughout the Fitness Survivor Gym course and it's proving to be a very daunting physical task to most of the students. So let's get started. Hey everybody, I'm now here with Miss Tanaka. So Miss Tanaka, what are the Survivor Games? Survivor Games are activities that we do with the grade 10 Survivor class. So normally the students are interacting in different activities throughout the week, like um, they'll have muscular strength, muscular endurance, they'll have some plyometrics, they'll have cardiovascular endurance. So we try to combine all of those into a more competitive um, element because, you know, for the most part, fitness is individual. So this allows the students to get that competitive edge that they normally would get in a regular TGFU class. So then one of the most important questions, is this course available to girls? Oh, there's, it is definitely available to girls. I mean, I'm a girl. And um, yeah, I think that we would love to see way more, way more females join the classes. I, it, whatever guys can do, I always say, girls can do better. How did you choose to enroll in the Fitness Survivor Gym course? Um, when I was in grade nine, like it was very like sports based and like I love my sports and stuff like that, but I really wanted to like focus on my sport for like the upcoming years and we had a choice in gym classes between creative movements back to like the kind of grade nine girl gym, which is like sports every week and then fitness and fitness is a big sport, every, a big part in every sport and I play rugby and soccer so fitness is very important like muscle strength. So um, I thought like the Survivor Fitness gym class would be really good and really beneficial. So hopefully all of you have a better understanding of what these Survivor games are. And remember, you can always sign up for the Fitness Survivor gym course by going to careercruising.com and selecting that gym option. Until next time, I'm Jason Anderson for Colts TV, signing off. Let's take a look at some sports. I'm Mark Batista and you're watching the Cross Country Colts Classic 2011. First up were our midget boys. I'm here with Liam Mulcahy. So Liam, uh, you came third place overall in the midget boys race. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, it was a tough race. I mean, there was a lot of, it wasn't a lot of hills, but just the distance and on a bunch of runners, a lot of runners were very good here. Uh, strong race, fast pace, and really aggressive. Midget girls were up next. Let go. What was your strategy going into your race today? train hard to keep focused and there's going to be some tough, tough competition so I knew who to look out for and so just followed them and then at the end just sprinted. The Colts Classic was a great success with our junior girls finishing first place as a team, our senior girls finishing second place as a team and our senior boys finishing third place as a team. 
Now we're at the YRAs where our athletes have to face the challenge of running up this steep, steep hill. The senior boys ended off the day with their amazing 7 kilometer run. Looks good, buddy! And I'm here with uh, Mr. Arsenal, one of the coaches of the cross country team. And Mr. Arsenal, how do you think the team did today? Well, I think the team did very well. We um, qualified five teams for office. So we had uh, both our midget teams won, our junior girls team won, our junior boys came second, and our senior girls won. And our mid senior boys had a very good race. They placed third, just narrowly missing qualified for offset. Sounds good. Was, were there any individuals that stuck out in your eyes? Um, we had quite a few good individual races today, um, quite a few medals, but uh, I guess some of the ones that were really sort of stood out, um, Kirsten Ver Ver Vergara, sorry, Kirsten, uh, came second in the midget girls race, a really fast time, and we had Sarah Blum in the junior girls race who came second with a big breakthrough race. Tiffany Chung was third in the senior girls race, and then we had a couple of winners, Liam McCauley um, in the midget boys, won the midget boys race, and Amy Kachuk won the senior boys race, so we had some really standout performances. A special mention though, Connor Buckley in the junior boys race really made it so that team qualified in an amazing race today. Amen. So Amen, you came first place at Cold Class, you came first place at YRAs. Can you just tell everyone what's your secret? Um, I don't know, I guess hard training. I don't know what you want to say, but uh, I try hard and uh, stay in school. So you're running in Austin a couple weeks from now. Um, what's your strategy going into that? Uh, well, I have a lot of competition ahead of me. Hopefully I can just stick with them and uh, pull out the win. But if not, uh, I've had a great season and off to Junior Nationals. Hey, how are you liking the episode so far? I don't know what I'm saying. Coach said to fake right and break left. Watch out for the pick and keep an eye on the fence. Gotta run the give and go, take the ball to the hole. And don't be afraid to shoot the outside, Jay. Just keep your head in the game. Just keep your head in the game. And don't be afraid to shoot the outside, Jay. Hi, I'm Robbie Pilmer reporting for the Colts tennis team. Let's check out some of the highlights from this past fall. The tennis team is led by Mr. Fornazari. Hi, I'm here with Mr. Fornazari. Mr. Fornazari, overall, how do you think the team played this season? I'm really pleased with the way both the juniors and the senior uh, tennis teams played this year. We had some high expectations and in many cases we met them, so we are the overall senior York Region champions with uh, several players going to OFSA and our juniors played very well. Austin Blades and Nadia Mendes won the uh, doubles championship, so we've got some junior champions as well. So. But the main point for us was about athlete development, so to improve our tennis skills. It, the tennis season is sort of at the end of their summer season, so it's about matching up the right players and uh, and trying to develop them through some, some drills so, and a lot of fun. 
Hi, I'm here with Austin Blades, YRAA doubles champion. And Austin, what are your expectations coming into the season, and did you feel that you met them? Uh, well, this season I felt like I really wanted to improve my game and hopefully come out with a championship, which eventually did happen. Uh, me and my partner, Nadia, practiced well together, and I think the whole team gave a good effort at practices, even though we had to come in early in the morning. For Colt CV, I'm Robbie Pilmer, signing out. on this ground. That's deliberate. That's majestic. Sheer brilliance. That's all you can say about that piece of football from a talented, talented footballer. Standing here with Carly Nugent. Who are you rooting for tonight at homecoming? I would say I'm rooting for everyone, but mostly the girls' excellence program playing at 5:30. Awesome. And uh, who are you guys playing tonight? Uh, we're playing Seneca College. Perfect. Good luck, Carly.
percolator. It's time for the Mia Jaleza. It's time for Never expect to be sitting across the desk from a doctor when they tell you that you have stage 3 cancer. It's just not a scenario that you put yourself in. Whenever I heard the word cancer when I was younger, like, I thought you'd die. So, um, in January, I was diagnosed with CNS lupus, which is a autoimmune disease where the antibodies in my body that protect me against infection or colds that you usually get, um, it's attacking my own body. Well, I was diagnosed January 28th of uh, 2011 and by February 28th, one month to the day later, I was uh, doing my first chemotherapy and uh, radiation treatment and I did 28 straight days of radiation and 35 straight days of chemotherapy so it meant uh, going to the hospital every day. I've had three uncles pass away of prostate cancer and last spring my father was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I was in school in grade 7 and I was leaving and my principal, he was like a nice guy, you know, but he just came up to me one day and he just gave me a hug and he said, you know, I don't know, he gave me some words of wisdom and I was like, what, what? So I went home and then I was walking down the street and like there was just a bunch of cars at my house, like my whole family was there. So like I walk in and everyone was like crying and stuff. But I think the scariest part was that they told me that if it wasn't dealt with right away, I could have died. Um, so I remember going into sick kids on January 26th, being told exactly what I had and wanting to come back the next day and start treatment. So on January 27th, I started cyclophosphamide chemotherapy. Also, my father had surgery very quickly and he was treated well and um, from my own experience at Sunnybrook. Um, I think it's really important to stress the importance of early diagnosis and treatment. And part of that is the research that goes into developing early diagnosis and treatments, which are really key in saving people's lives. I went on chemotherapy for like nine months, but like the first two months, I was going to the hospital a lot, like five days a week, like eight hour days, just lying in a bed. I had known it was common, but I didn't know that it affects one in six men in Canada. It's actually had a positive life-changing perspective because I immediately, upon being told that I had cancer, um, readjusted my priorities in life and my family and my friends became instantaneously the most important things. I'm still friends with all my nurses, but um, they'd come in and they'd have to wear masks and gloves and eye goggles and this stuff. They looked like ducks. Like, it was so funny. I was just like sitting at home one day and like my dad comes in to my room and he's like Mario Lemieux on the phone and I was like nah no he's not and then he's like yeah he is here's the phone so he gave the phone to me I was just like hello and like it was Mario Lemieux and he just called me to tell me like how he had the same thing like he got through it and he went back to playing hockey because like I played hockey a lot and he just like told me how he got through it. And then I accidentally hung up on him. Yeah, you know what? Um, people who have cancer are people first. I'm a teacher first and a patient second. And the greatest thing that the staff has done here is treat me as Brent and uh, not sick Brent. I, I appreciate very much that BCSS is involved so heavily in fundraising for cancer initiatives like Movember. Um, I was just glad I finally could, you know, live my life again.
Hi, this is Vicky Kravchenko, and I'm here in the Food and Nutrition Room with Ms. Martinez. And today, they are having the Thanksgiving lunch. So how are you, Ms. Martinez? I'm doing good, thank you. Why do you think it's important to celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, I think at this time of the year, it gets everyone to step back and really realize how much they have to be thankful for. And those of us who don't have a lot to be thankful for still appreciate it, but then we can also give to everyone else um, to share a little bit of, of happiness and joy around this time. So how do you think that the grade 9 and 12 students were able to pull this off? Well, this takes weeks of pre-planning and really we're preparing about a week in advance. We make sure we ask all the staff who are going to come so we know numbers. So the students are planning all the different types of dishes, what has to go in them, um, what needs to be prepared, cut, boiled beforehand. That way our cooking process is a lot easier and faster, but it really starts three, four days, the actual cooking process in advance, all the way till today where it's set out in what you guys have probably videotaped. It, it was delish. The turkey was tender, everything was great, the fixings, and that pumpkin pie at the end just really completed the meal. I thought it was absolutely delicious and I think it's great that the Family Studies Department does this. Uh, it's a fantastic cause that they contribute to. Uh, I think the students did a fabulous job and so did uh, Miss Martinez and Miss Lazier. Mr. Gouch, what have been some of the biggest differences from this year's team and last year's team? I think one of the biggest differences for the team has been the depth of the team. We have 40 guys and I feel comfortable and confident playing any of those 40 guys in any situation. Who have been some of your leaders that have stepped up into grade 10 roles and helped the team success? Some of the guys that really stepped up this year for the team. Uh, Matt Caulfield for sure has been a uh, leader on defense. Uh, Seth Mendelson has been great for us on offense. Kyle Wilson, Athan Neal, those guys are the absolute assets for us. Who have been some of the surprising players on the team and how have they helped contribute to the team's success? I think a lot of guys at, at junior football are surprising for us because they're grade nines and they've never played football before. But um, a lot of young guys have stepped in and played very important roles for the team. Um, Mike Mora, Matthew Weiser, um, Austin Spence, to speak to a few guys on offense. Um, on defense, Mike Downey, uh, Amir Zeisler, to name a few. A lot of guys have played huge roles for us this year and really stepped up and played some great football. Hey, I'm here with Matt Coffin. Matt, as the team captain, what are some of the responsibilities that you take on upon yourself to win, help the team win week in and week out? Um, well, before every game, I do a little speech to get the guys uh, all readied up. Uh, make sure everyone's uh, you know calm, focused on the game, and not thinking about anything else. Because when we're on the field, the only thing that matters is football. That's it. Hey, come on, be aggressive. He's there by himself. Put him down, man. T. That should have been a. Oh, I mean, I can't say it because I'm mic'd up. I can't say it, but you know what it should have been. Hey, hey, who's the outside linebacker on that side? Hey, it's our ball. You got that ball and kill. Jeez, you can't leave points like that off the board. Mora, if he's, I think they called you so you are. Did you block, did you pancake a guy way away from the play? I did, but it wasn't from behind. No, 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 because he, he didn't call you for block in the back. He calls you for a UR. If you're too far from the ball carry, you can't pancake guys.
Go run it back, run it back, do it. You won't do it, all the tough kids are doing it. All the tough kids are doing it, you won't do it. Yeah, he did it, he did it. One year ago, the senior boys volleyball team suffered a stunning defeat in the YRAE championship. With fire in their hearts and a thirst for that elusive championship trophy, our boys take to the court today, vengeance on their mind. Will you be there? I'm Eddie Garfin, reporting for Cole TV here in the Chem Lab with Mr. Lamb. Um, well, this season I think we set our goals pretty high. Uh, we're hoping to qualify for the York Region Finals, which we are hoping to win. And in doing that, we'll qualify for OFSA, hopefully, and hopefully win gold there too. Who's the biggest surprise going into the season? I think our biggest surprise coming in was uh, Malik, Malik Lindo Ireland. Uh, he's a great time player, but he came up to tryouts, he uh, really showed his stuff, and he's become a staple on our front line. Where does the leadership come from? I'd have to say that the leadership comes from our captain, Lucas Coleman. Uh, he's obviously a strong player, but his, uh, his ability to corral the troops and bring everyone together, pick them up when they're down, is uh, very inspiring. I think all of uh, the players would agree that that one word would be a family. Uh, it was a goal we set out at the beginning of the year to play as more than just a team, but to play as a family and to support each other and, and bring each other up when we're down. So um, yeah, I think that one word would be family and I think all the players would agree. Ladies and gentlemen, come out and support your senior volleyball teams as they contend for YRAA glory tonight. See you there! Colt CV Top 5 Plays of this Fall Season Number 5 Number 5, Sam Gordon blasts through the defense to get a try. Sasha Ricciuti burns the defense to get a goal. This was the fourth goal in a 4 0 win for the senior boys at YRAA Finals. Good luck at Awesome. Number three. Jarrell Williams crushes a guy to later run the whole field and get a try for his team. Oh, yeah! Bill Crothers intercepts the ball. 
What a great hit by Apple. What a great combination play between Megan Feliciano and Taylor Robart to get a try for the senior girls rugby team. Hey Mal, this has been a really great episode. Yeah, we've seen everything from kettlebells to b-ball and much, much more. It's really unfortunate that we're out of time. Until next time, Bo Crothers, I'm Mallory Onnit and this is Kieran Arnold, signing off. Gonna find my baby, gonna hold her tight, gonna grab some afternoon delight. My motto's always been when it's right, it's right, why wait until the middle of a cold dark night? When everything's a little clearer in the light of day. And you know the night is always gonna be there anyway. Sky rockets in flight, whoop, afternoon delight, a whoop. Afternoon delight. Swag.